Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. Just a quick little chat before I get stuck into the shave, which I'm really looking forward to. And it basically revolves around me and my channel and how I'm looking at things at the moment. As you guys know, I've transitioned into reviewing products based on what they are, how they work, performance, sense, all that sort of stuff on the products alone. I'm not going to concentrate on companies and businesses and who makes them and what they do and all that. It's, it's irrelevant really in the grand scheme of things in terms of the product. If the product's great, I'll tell you it's great. If it's shit, I'll tell you it's shit. If it's got issues or problems or things that need fixing and all that, I'll talk about that. But that's what I'm going to base on. And then I'm just going to enjoy the shave. And that's where I wanted to sort of stay. I'm not interested in bickering. I'm not interested in politics. I'm not interested in bullshit. I'm not interested in hearsay. I'm not interested in derogatory comments. I'm not interested in, really not interested in negativity. That does my head in. I'm a very negative person. I feed off it. I need to distance myself from it. So I'm not bothered about it whatsoever. If you want to be negative, go somewhere else. That's all I'm saying. That being said, if you put something forward and it's constructive, it's criticism and, and it can be worked on and it can be helped. You know, if you, you give feedback, you say something and I, and I can work on that and do something with it. I will. That's, that's what I do. I enjoy that part of it. But things are being said, things are being done at the moment all over the world, including this hobby on this channel, on other channels. And it impacts me emotionally and personally. Whether you believe it or not, it does. And you're putting yourself out on these channels in front of hundreds of thousands of people, millions if they watch it, you know, and, and it exposes you to things and, and you've got to deal with that. Now, the person that puts a comment on the other side probably doesn't quite realise that their one little comment from their one person in that one house can have such an impact on somebody else on the other side of the world, but it does, it does make an impact on you. So it wears me down, that's all I'm saying. So all I'm asking for is that people look at my reviews, look at my channel and try and keep it as positive as you can. If you can, keep it to yourself. It's really, and, and that goes for everyone, whether you be a vendor, whether you be an artisan, whether you be a, a subscriber, someone passing through, it doesn't really matter. Just try and keep, keep, keep things positive if you can. The world's negative enough as it is. It's full of shit. It's full of people making horrible stories up, twisting the truths, making things way worse than they sound, making, uh, allegations and false allegations against people there's lots of stuff happening and I'm not the one here to sit and say that's right and that's wrong I'm just here to have a shave and use products and I'll keep it at that if anyone's got any comments on what I've said put them down below um, I don't know it might start something but that's my thought process on it I'm going to use products now for what they are and that, whether that be Yaki, DS Cosmetic Global Shave Club or right through Barrister and Man Australian Private Reserve Talon steel, all the top partisans. It doesn't matter where they're from and what happens. If it comes into my den, I will review it. Most companies like DS Cosmetic don't send me stuff anymore because I reviewed this stuff honestly and I thought DS Cosmetic made pretty average brushes. I thought the knots were pretty shit and I thought the handles were pretty poorly turned. Yaki on the other hand, great handles, great knots, sick to death of their overbearing, really strong advertising. You know, emails and text messages, uh, emails, messenger messages, Instagram messages, overtaking people's pages. It was, it was just everywhere and it was doing my head in. So I can't be bothered with that, not interested whatsoever. And that's why I don't really review Yaki. I'll recommend them to people because they're great brushes. The, the badger knots and the synthetics are awesome. But three minutes 45 in, I'm done. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm going to shave. Razor Rock, the Stally. Now this is an oud scented soap. Some people have told me it doesn't smell like oud at all. It's, now, I didn't really know what oud smelled like. I do have an EDP here, which I'm using after my shave today, which does have real essential oil of oud in it. And I can smell it in there, and I can smell it in here. So this does have, whether it be fragrance oil, aroma oils, which I've just found out, I didn't know what that was, or essential oils. It's in this, I can smell it, and it pretty much smells like it. An intense burst of oud cologne. I can't remember what this is based on. Aqua de Palma, something like that, I'm not sure. The scent on it. It's just a clean, fresh, rich, woodsy scent. And that's what I get. And the scent of wood is something that I've never smelled before. And now I know that it is oud, because it's in there, and it's in a couple of other things with oud that I've smelled. They all smell similar, I can get that same note that's in here. And this is a pretty good performing soap, made by well, made for Razor Rock. I don't think Razor Rock actually make it. Let me see. It's made in Italy. Don't 
quote me on this, but I think this is possibly made by Chung Song Fing or whatever it is, Chung Fing Song, whatever they are based out of Italy. I think that's who maybe makes this soap, but legacy. Don't quote me on that. It's a very good soap. I think it, I think it works very well. It's pretty slick. It's not, it doesn't make as dense and creamy lather as you get from your, your big artisans like Barrister of Man and Tallow and Steel, you know, and, and you've got the Swedish Witch and Noble Otter, all these guys. But it makes a really nice lather. It's easy to work with. It's slick. It leaves a pretty good post shave, not the best, but obviously I finish with a good post shave normally anyway. I have changed over to Australian Private Reserve Serum for the next couple of weeks just to see how it goes. I'm going to give it some good a good run for two weeks, twice a day, after my shaves and then at night, and just see if it makes a difference, see if I notice a difference in how my skin feels. I did notice yesterday when I used it, it did leave a slightly, ever so slightly bit of like tacky film on my skin, but it, it went away after a short time. But it was there. It wasn't like, it didn't feel like it fully absorbed, it felt like it left a layer. But later on, after an hour or two, I wouldn't have noticed to be honest with you. It just felt normal. Like I just used a moisturiser or something like that. Right, so here we go. I have loaded the brush, which I haven't even spoke about yet. It's my Grizzly Bay Joker brush. I love this brush. It's absolutely brilliant. Big, massive, chunky handle. It dwarfs the knot a little bit. I think the 28mm rhodium knot would look sensational on this. But it's got a 26mm, I don't know, I think it's a V2 or a V3 fan shearing. But it's a very nice knot. It's got lovely soft tips. Creates a cracking lather. Releases the lather well. And more importantly, when you use a badger brush, or any natural hair brush, it normally absorbs the scent of the soap. So once I've finished here, it'll have a beautiful oud scent. Now this soap was released by Razor Rock in tribute to Anthony Esposito, the stallion on YouTube, who released a video recently but hasn't done videos for quite a long time, it's just, it just disappeared. I did watch the video. I do like the guy, I think his videos are brilliant. And now that I'm sort of looking at things slightly differently, the way I behaved on Facebook when I commented on his post a while back, commented on his comment, I was, oh, I was a dick. I did apologise, I did send him a message, but he never got back to me. I think he deleted me from Facebook and Messenger. But I've extended the olive branch, I'll extend it again, it's just there. If you ever wanted to reach out and talk about it, I'm more than welcome and more than willing to apologise again. I think uh, the way the world's going at the moment, it's a very sad state of affairs the way it is. And why the fuck are we bickering over stupid shit? I have no idea. But, let's have a shave. I'm not quite sure what hair is in this. I know it's a B2 Manchurian. Oh, sort of Manchurian hair, wasn't it? What a dickhead. I'm not really sure what Manchurian hair is, to be honest. You know, I, I, I go and read all this stuff all the time. Your silver tip, your Manchurians. I know they're all different grades of hair, and some are treated, some aren't. best which isn't the best but in the case of sterling it was because it was brilliant other than the shedding it was a brilliant knot it felt superb on the face so you can see here how easy this lathers and how quickly it lathers I mean like I said it's not it doesn't make a, a super dense lather 
all the same. It's pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit, it's almost just slightly on the airy side. I will say I'm quite, it's, it's lost its scent strength just ever so slightly. Not much, but it has lost it just ever so slightly. Right, the razor for today is the Carb Christopher Bradley razor. Surprise, surprise. It's the only DE razors I've got in the den anymore. So anyone that is asking for the Merca or the, the Mergress or anything else, I don't have anything else. That's all I've got. I've got a vintage Gillette, which doesn't shave very nicely, but I'm keeping it at the moment. That's sort of a, because it was a gift from my, my in-laws. But this is all I'm using. I'm using what I enjoy and enjoying what I enjoy. And all the soaps and aftershaves and post-shaves and pre-shaves are all part of the enjoyment. Right, the blade today is a brand new Boss Cod, which that doesn't say Boss Cod on it, but it is a brand new Boss Cod blade. This razor has a tendency to make a ship blade better or a mild blade feel better. Oh, have I just sliced my finger? I think I was very lucky there. The old safety guard saved my finger there, I think, hopefully. There is the wrapper there. It comes double wrapped, but it's not covered in glue, which is great. I sliced myself. No, I didn't. Don't believe that. So it is loaded up. This is the B plate. Perfect blade alignment every time. And here we go. Uh, that's not good. What's going on? Put that on back to front or upside down. I'm not actually feeling this cut in here. I know it is, but it's not doing very well. It feels quite smooth. It feels very smooth. Although, a minute. That side feels extremely smooth. This side feels pretty rough. A bit strange. Not super rough, but rough enough to annoy me. It's very noticeable. I do believe that Voscod blades have pretty average quality control. Or something happened, I, I, I don't know. But I find out of this pack of Voscods, Sometimes I get a good blade, it's brilliant both sides, sometimes it's shit both sides. Residual slickness is, is it okay? It's not super, but it's good enough. Not that you really need it. I'm going to stick with the boss card, I'm not going to switch it out yet. It's not causing me enough grief, but it is annoying me a little bit.
Right, cross the green. Yeah, that's that's not pumping. It's coming out and it's going in the bin. Really strange, isn't it? Like sometimes a blade can work so good, and then you get another one of the same blade from the same packet, and it's shit. Now this, on the other hand, the Gillette Nasset. Generally for me, I've got a bit of shakes here. I don't think, in all honesty, I've had a bad Nasset blade. I can feel straight off the bat that it's thin. It's not as thick as the Voskhod in terms of the actual thickness of the blade that way. Here we go. M massive difference. I don't know whether this says Gillette on it, yeah. I don't know whether Gillette actually make these or they just put the name on them. And they're all sort of made in a, a generic factory that makes everyone's blades. I mean, it's quite amazing really, when you think how many blades there are on the market and how different they all feel. Not, well, not all of them, but you know, like a Gillette Ruby feels very similar to a Nasset and a Super Thin feels different to both of them. So let's... Now this is quite an old formula, this soap. Now if you watch my shave with declaration grooming, my head shave, this lather's easier and lather's better, creates a better lather. The, the overall performance and post shave from it aren't as good, but the lather itself is it's a more enjoyable soap to work with for me. Now, if you watch Ken shaving and BSing, or you follow Ken on Facebook, Ken's a nice guy, a really nice bloke. But I'm sure he'll confess himself that he had a bit of a brain fart or a meltdown yesterday. When he posted a video on YouTube, was clearly directed at specific people but made him sound like a, a raving alcoholic lunatic and I did message him and he's absolutely fine and he just felt he had to vent at the time the video's gone now thankfully I don't think it did him any justice as a person because I don't think that is the person Ken is I think things just got a little bit too heated for him he had a few beers he got banned off Facebook for 24 hours and then lost his shit on YouTube. <laughs> now granted, it was funny at the same time, but I was actually worried about it. I, I actually I messaged him straight away to make sure he was okay and he was. So if you if you watched it and you haven't been able to contact him or you haven't heard from him or you haven't seen anything since, he's alright. Ken is a man who is very set in his ways, I think, in terms of politics and, and a lot of stuff's getting to him at the moment. Look at that. With regards to the, the presidency and all that sort of stuff, and the coronavirus and all that. So it's understandable, but I don't really see the world like that. I just wake up and go to work, or wake up and do what's got to be done. That's how I see the world. I 
I know nothing I see or do will ever make a difference to the top. I don't think that could be any more evident than from looking at the current president who has wanted to do so much and been able to do so little because they just haven't allowed him and I think that speaks volumes for how much the little man can do. It's a fantastic shave. A few weepers. But then again, would a shave from me be any good without any weepers? I don't know. Splash of cold water. I'm going to rinse the brush out now while that water just sits on my face. Now, for those of you out there, if you want to try this silk, you can get it from Italian Barber in Canada, and it is available from several retailers around the world if they've got it in stock. I think Beard and Blade actually used to stock this, because I'm pretty sure that's where I got mine from. Over here in Australia. I always wanted to smell oud, I wanted to know what it was all about, and this one, from what I read and seen the reviews of, is pretty much all out, so it's a scent I really enjoy it. Oh, it smells fantastic. Right, I'm gonna pop on. Some serum now from Australian Private Reserve, APR Ascent Shills Restoration peptide concentrate serum. So what I do is I wet my hands, one square, which looks like that, rub it in with the water on my hands. The scent on it is lovely. The first time I used it it wasn't that great, I didn't think it was that nice. I don't know whether it was a little bit stuck in the nozzle and it just tainted the scent a little bit. But having used it now a few times, the scent is really nice and it does smell very much like Passione from Australia Private Reserve or I can't even remember the name of it now. Barris and Man Soap. Soap makers of Awesome Town it smells very similar to that passion fruit. It's got a very good passion fruit scent to it and it's lovely. Right, the soap for today was Australian, no it wasn't, it was Razor Rock Stallion Oud Scented Cologne. I think it's Aqua de Palma it's based on, but it's a really nice scent. It's fading a little bit in the tub and in the brush, but all in all, still a beautiful scent. The brush was my Grizzly Bay Joker brush with 26mm Venturi. I absolutely love this brush and it was gifted to me by a gentleman who, did, who bought it on the pretense it was going to be really vibrant and it wasn't quite vibrant enough for him. When the light hits it in certain ways, it does sort of ping and explode with colour but it is quite dull looking in person even though the video probably makes it look a little bit better. Right, the razor was the colour Christopher Bradley razor with the B plate 3.25 inch handle which is my preferred length. I think I could probably do an extra 0.25 and I would still enjoy it. The first blade was the Voscod which was nothing short of dreadful. Pretty smooth on one side, horrendous on the other side. Quality control and boss gods are probably pretty average to be honest. I did switch that out for, comes in a blank wrapper, a Gillette Nasset blade. Finished the shave off, got a few weepers, but other than that, fantastic shave with the Nasset. I'm just going to feel my head as well and just give you a bit of an update. Just for the, this is the first time I've used this serum on my head in my previous shave. Yeah, it feels lovely. It doesn't actually feel. First time I used it, I felt like it left a film. Like a sticky film. That sticky film's gone, my skin feels great on my head now. The sticky film is here though. You can hear it. But you can see it pulling the, making my lip shake. 
I'll be just doing my head in. But we'll see how it goes over the next couple of weeks. And I'll be using it every shave and every day. And I'll give some updates on it. Now, the juice for the day is Oud Blend. I think it's Lataffa Fragrances from memory. I can't remember. There's a little bit more to it. I can't really remember. My memory's crap. It's quite a nice bottle. It's pretty cheap. It's about 50 bucks. I won this in a giveaway on one of the local fragrance channels on Facebook for Australia. And there is the ingredients list down here. It is an Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum. That's the ingredients. And as you can see in here, we've got chunks of Oud Wood floating in it as well. Now the scent on it is intoxicating. Like, I wasn't sure how this was going to be. Obviously it never cost me anything. I was really excited to try it. But the scent on it is beautiful. That Oud, I can smell it straight away. It's a sort of prevalent sort of thing. There's a bit of rose in there as well, a bit of that. And then there's this lovely, beautiful oriental spice through it. And one thing that disappoints me with it a little bit is the longevity. It doesn't last long on my skin. But what I found when I used this and then I put some on, it lasts a lot longer because I, I think I must have dry skin because dry skin doesn't allow a scent to stay on your skin for long. It dries the oils up quickly. Put a moisturiser on or something on, it allows your scents to last a lot longer. So if you want it to last a long time, put a little bit of moisturiser on your arms or on the back of your hands, wherever you spray it on your neck, back of your neck, and then spray your aftershave on and it'll make a big difference. But anyway, here we go. in the hands. Oh, straight away, I mean, it, 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 the oud runs through it from start to finish as far as I'm concerned. It's just a beautiful woodsy scent and it, I found that it's nice in the warmer weather and this will really work in the cooler weather and I think you get away with that at work as well because it's not offensive smelling and it's not got massive projection. So you can smell it probably a metre away. Any further than that, it's just going to be very subtle. Some people smell it, some people won't. Biggest surprise for me with this scent is that my wife absolutely loves it and that was a bit that blew me away because this is something I wasn't expecting her to like I don't know whether it's all the spices and things through it because we both love curries I've got absolutely no idea whatsoever maybe it's the aphrodisiac thing from the oud but overall it's just a stunning scent and it's cheap as chips I have just ordered as well just while I'm on it the video's long anyway my videos are getting stupid long at the moment I'm sorry I've ordered Armaf Club de Nuit Intense Eau de Parfum instead of the EDT which is what I had before and what I've always recommended but the Eau de Parfum should last a bit longer if you're in Australia you can get it on Catch of the Day at the moment it's 129 bucks for a 200ml bottle of it and from the reviews I've read on there and reviews online it's far superior in longevity projection and everything else and it's pretty much the exact same scent notes just a stronger concentration of oils so <sighs> What a scent. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Stay safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive. And I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.